Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today is an exciting day. Well, actually, night. I had to wait till night. Uh, our saga with our California trip and our pallet is finally over. Uh, when we got back from California is right when that crazy polar vortex madness happened where it was like negative 40, 30 degrees, whatever, in the Midwest area, and it was pretty crazy. So our pallet got picked up in California almost a day or two later uh, from Kev's shop, uh, but it got delayed because they couldn't drive through that crazy cold. So I arrived just today. It showed up, I got a load in the back of my truck, but uh, you know I was working all day and didn't get a chance to get home until it's like 6.30, almost seven o'clock tonight, and uh, it's supposed to snow tonight again, so I can't just leave the pallet out in the truck, and this is like the ultimate Christmas uh, gift type deal, except you know your gifts, uh, where I'm gonna unwrap the pallet. Mike isn't around, so he I get to unwrap and see how his stuff is, and uh, we get to see exactly everything I got. So I'm gonna leave the camera outside because uh, the shop's too full and I can't pull my F-250 in. Uh, but I'm gonna pull the stuff out. I got some some of the Eastwood modular lights set up. They're super bright, so you should be able to see what's going on. And just kind of pull everything out and uh, show you guys a little better what we scored in our uh, California trip. Yes, so you can see our, uh, our pallet situation here is, uh, it looks rough, and I will say in our defense of the video, people were talking crap on our, our pallet assembly, but we tried to spend as little as possible to build this pallet. In retrospect, it probably would have been better to spend the extra like 20 bucks for some more sheet metal, or uh, some more uh, plywood, uh, but it ended up working okay. Uh, a little bit of, breaking here in our, our like Luan that we use for boards on the side, but overall it actually seems like it fared pretty well. I'm gonna dig in and see how everything got jostled. Hopefully nothing got moved around and actually fell out the bottom, because that was one thing we didn't do too well is secure everything in there as we had hoped. So I'm gonna dig in. Plastic wrap probably saved our because uh, it's what's actually holding the whole freaking pallet together. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, these wheels were definitely breaking the crappy plywood. Uh, and our boards that were donated by, uh, by Cab didn't do too well either, but they're in place. Uh, pro tip when you're going to swap meets, bring an extra empty luggage, uh, so you may or may not need it, but you can check it on the way back. This time we didn't need it, so I ended up uh, just throwing it on the pallet with some parts in it, and it worked out pretty well. Oh! Ugh. The flathead starter. So uh, kind of funny at the end of the swap meet on Saturday, everybody was uh, kind of packing up and we uh, were doing our last little rounds at the end of the day and some guy just put all of his tables, turned them into uh, just free tables and there was tons of flathead parts and early Ford parts, t stacks of starters, generators, all that stuff and uh, it took everything I had not to take everything and bring it back with me but I grabbed a starter that was all painted up and looked like it had been rebuilt and it was actually in really nice shape. So I decided to bring this home because I'm always seem to be missing flathead starters when I need them. All right. So, uh -oh. this guy right here, um, might be hard for you guys to see, but is an old Dago. I'm gonna show you the end. Hammer dropped, kick ass. 
super old uh, early Dago drop axle that's done the old kind of blacksmith hammered way. Uh, you saw a clip maybe in the Turlock video where I was hassling with, or haggling I should say, with uh, some of these old biker guys. Uh, they were super cool, we walked up on them. This, uh, this drop axle actually had $500 uh, marked on it with some old paint marker that was kind of like way too expensive I thought, or that was like the top, top, top LA Roadster show price for, for the axle. He didn't really know what it was, he just knew it was an old Ford axle that was dropped, uh, but he didn't know that it was an old hammer dropped one, he wasn't into that stuff. Uh, so I started haggling with him, I looked at it, saw the price, kind of started walking away and then the guy goes, well, what, what do you offer me for it? And after we kind of gave each other back and forth, I offered him a hundred bucks just to be a jerk because he was insisting I'd make him an offer and he said, oh, you're, go a little higher. So after we haggled back and forth uh, a bunch uh, and as he was rolling a joint and doing that the whole entire time, uh, I think I ended up getting it for like $155 or something or $160 for this actual axle. So I was really firm on that that price when I offered him that because I got a bunch of old drop axles. But it was a really neat one for that kind of price. I had to buy it and it was a hell of a story. Uh, you know, 30 minutes of haggling back and forth with these biker guys, which was really fun. Ah. So we got, got a set of five Kelsey Hayes uh, bent spoke wheels. Uh, my buddy Kev Elliott that we uh, loaded the pallet at his place first stopped when we were visiting him. He had these wheels sitting there. Um, he had just gotten them from one of his garage mates for really cheap that was cleaning out somebody's garage. And uh, I looked at him and said, oh, what do you want for those? And he goes, I don't know. I don't really want to deal with selling them. How's 200 bucks? And I was like, couldn't get the money out any quicker. It was a set of five. Uh, this one doesn't have it, but some of the other ones have uh, the early Rocky Mountain style brakes on them, or drums on them, which is pretty cool. Uh, they all need to be blasted and the junk tires taken off, but they're actually a pretty clean set of uh, these bent spoke Kelsey Hayes, which are getting quite val valuable this, these days. And I've had a hard time finding a full set for myself. Uh, every time I find them, I end up finding one or two, or I'll find three and they're really beat up and then I end up selling them because I want a full match set for myself. So now I have a nice set of five for an inexpensive price. Goes to show you if your buddies uh, have stuff laying around in the garage when you come to visit, always, always ask for what's for sale because you might be surprised and you get a good friend price. All right, so uh, next thing is one of Mike's prized possessions. I'm not gonna unwrap it because I don't want the liability of breaking it, but we'll drop a photo right in here. Mike got this really kick-ass Ham's beer sign. Uh, that's like a, some kind of crazy thing where it looks like the water's moving, oh God. And uh, when it's plugged in, and for any of you guys that don't know, Mike's last name is Hams, is Ham, and he collects Ham's beer vintage memorabilia. So he was at the swap meet looking for old beer stuff, and he scored this really cool light. Um, he was, I know, worried when he wrapped it up and put it on the pallet because he was kind of like, I hope this doesn't get crushed because it's quite fragile. And honestly, most of my stuff wasn't fragile. But it looks like it arrived okay. Nothing got crushed and. Um, it seems all right, but I'm gonna leave it wrapped up so he can unwrap it, because I want to give him that one joy in his life of unwrapping his cool advertising ham spear light. But we'll drop a photo in right here so you guys can see what it looks like uh, all hooked up and everything. All right, so we got the uh, we got the light off. I pulled another wheel or so off of the, of the uh, Kelsey Hayes. So another thing we have here, which doesn't match, one thing is not like the other. You guys on Instagram were calling me out uh, that this, I had these set of wheels in the photo of our bounty photo on Instagram. Uh, you guys were talking crap. What are those kit car wheels? Blah, blah, blah. And guys were giving me hell. Here's a pro tip for all you guys who are talking <laughs> When you go to a swap meet and you go to a swap meet that's on something that's very focused, you can make a lot of money if you look for things that are not the focus of that swap meet. So this is a set of Compomotive uh, modular, which means you can take them apart, three-piece Compomotive uh, race wheels. They're super light, 
They're in really great shape. I alluded to it in our Mercury video. When I was younger, I used to be obsessed with early uh, German cars, and uh, not early, but like 60s through 80s and early 90s German cars. I played for them in high school and in my early 20s quite a bit, and uh, that was I had a lot of fun doing that. Well, what that did is they educated me on old split wheels, old race wheels are extremely hot. So you thought those locomotives, or I mean the uh, the Kelsey Hayes wheels that we talked about for you guys who are in that stuff, they're pretty valuable. Well, I bought the set of four of these for forty dollars. I had fifty on them. I offered him forty. He took it. He was happy to see them go because he was at an antique car swap meet and he was surprised anybody would buy them. I sold them to a a friend or a guy that I've done business with that buys and sells this stuff. Now that I'm kind of out of the, that uh, that era of cars, I don't deal with them as much anymore. I, I sold them to him for $800, and he's going to then probably turn and sell them for like $1,500. I know you guys always like hearing us. Uh, you, we always people complain that we don't tell you guys what we pay for stuff or what we sell stuff for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I figured in this little video I'll show you guys what I paid. So. This is, this is the tip. I want you guys to take this mental note. When you're at a swap meet, don't just be looking for the one part that you need and you're going to complain because it was too expensive. Some of this stuff that I bought that we're going to dig out in a little while, I paid like, let's say 70 or 80% of retail for some old speed equipment, which is stuff that I really wanted for myself. But you know what? I bought a set of wheels for really cheap that I flipped and ended up paying for a lot of this stuff. So in the end, those parts that I bought for a little more money ended up actually being like almost free or really inexpensive because I was just smart enough to keep in the back of my head if I see other parts that are really cheap and are out of place, buy them up. So that's an instance where you can buy something and I just happen to walk on them, dumb luck as far as falling off, I'm walking up on them. But you know, I was smart enough to buy them, knew I already had a pallet, sent them home, and sold them real quick to a friend that's going to then clean them up really nice and sell them and pass them on to somebody that's going to put them on a Porsche or a Volkswagen or an Audi or something like that, that, that those guys are really into these wheels. So they're super cool. Um, and uh, I'm really psyched for somebody to get these polished up and on another car. The biggest thing is they're getting used. They're not getting scrapped. For as cheap as that guy was asking for them, I bet the next step for these wheels were getting scrapped. So hate on me, if you will, for making a couple of bucks. But you know what? It was money laying right on the ground and it helped pay for all the stuff I wanted. All right. Some more cool stuff. So I, um, let's see here. So I took, um, I took the, uh, I got a Wyand high rise. Any of you guys that follow my Instagram, I uh, saw so I was kind of posting live as I was scoring stuff. I was posting photos on my stories on Instagram of uh, what I was getting. So one of the, my favorite things I got that I've been looking for for ages, I actually wanted one for the Pagoda City Coupe when I was building it, but I couldn't find one. Ended up buying a thick stain high rise from Gene. Um, was a Wyand high rise, an early Wyand high rise. Well, I found one in a guy early on setup day. He had a ton of speed equipment. He was selling for a friend of his who was selling off his collection and he just had, I could have blown all of my money in like 30 seconds. So I tried to be reserved. One of the things I got was a uh, Wyand high rise intake. Uh, we'll drop the photo in right here. Uh, I took that on the plane with me because it was didn't pack very well in the crate here and I was a little afraid it was gonna get damaged. So I threw it in my carry-on, carried it on the plane, got stopped to security. They were okay with it after a little bit of back and forth. One of the things I did was, uh, you know, pro tip if you're if you're doing this kind of stuff and you're flying with old car parts, make sure that they don't smell, reek of gas or oil, or are leaking any of that. If you go through, uh, like checked, or I'm sorry, if you go through security and they they pull you aside to go through your bag, which you're going to if you're carrying old car parts, if it stinks of gas or it's leaking oil or it's really oily and gross looking. They're gonna pull it and they won't let you bring it on the plane. So a set of 97s came with the intake. Um, I uh, pulled the 97s off and threw them in the crate because they smelled like gas a little bit. So I didn't want any type of issue. The intake was hadn't been running so long. It didn't smell at all. It's actually pretty clean. Might have even been blasted at some point. So for the whole mess, the carbs and the intake, I paid $900 may sound expensive if you guys are just getting into this stuff or if you don't follow old flathead speed equipment very closely 900 bucks sounds like a lot for an old intake with a couple 
97s that probably need to be rebuilt. But those Y and high raise rises are one of the most sought after early high rise dual carb intakes, um, other than like an Eddie Myers or like an Edelbrock slingshot. So I was happy to find one. I've seen them sell. I think I just saw somebody list one recently for like 1500 bucks for just the intake with no 97s. So again, what I was talking about earlier with those, uh, those complimotive wheels, I paid up a little bit for something that was really rare that I had to have. I still paid a little under retail, but in the end, I bought some stuff that will pay for all that and even it out. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, that, that wine was a really great deal and it's in nice shape and I'm glad to have it. It went in my little case where I keep all my prized speed parts and uh, I'll be uh, putting it on a project someday soon. So here's something I grabbed that I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep it or sell it. Um, it was a, it was reasonably priced, so I, I just grabbed it. Um, so what it is, it's an old polished Edmonds Custom dual carb, dual single um, intake. Yeah, but it's an old Edmonds Custom. It's all uh, carved out or, or engraved, which is really cool. But you can tell it was polished and probably off an old hot rod or custom. Uh, this is for a Chevy straight six. I believe from my research and what I was looking at on it, I think it's actually meant for the earlier uh, straight sixes, uh, pre like 235. Some of you guys that know them really well will, will probably comment exactly, but I believe with some intake adapters, you can run them on the later ones, but it's really bitching. I like the fact that it was um, an old polished piece, which I thought was really neat. And I think I paid right around 200 bucks for it. I think he had like 350 on it and I haggled back and forth. I got it for around 200 bucks. So I thought for 200 bucks for an old Edmonds custom piece is pretty cool, very unusual. Uh, for my 52 Chevy, I have uh, a trip intake, an old Offy trip intake, which I'll be using. So I may not use this one, but even if I put it on the shelf for 200 bucks, uh, that's a couple of fancy dinners. So I figured it was a, a good investment and I could trade it off to a buddy or sell it if I need to fund some other parts purchases. So the, uh, I bought this actually before the y end intake off the, uh, the guy that had a trailer full of old speed equipment that is, he was selling for a buddy. Um, this is the first thing I spotted or I bought from him. It is an old fixed in, not a repop, NOS fixed in air cleaner, finned air cleaner. It still has the old mesh, uh, steel mesh air filter in it, but it doesn't look like it's ever been run. If it, if I'm pretty sure ever, cause there's no residue inside of it. Um, so that was pretty cool. I think I ended up paying 300 bucks for this, which again, fair price. I didn't steal it, but I thought it was pretty decent price for a polished, uh, basically to me looks NOS. Um, air filter, which is funny, is I've been looking for one of these for a really long time, and a really, uh, a, a friend of a friend, uh, an older guy I know, he's been sitting on one for a really long time, and we did some trading, and uh, he gave me a pretty good price, and I traded for another one, a used one, which I was really psyched to find, and now, typical, and now I got two of them, but I think I'm gonna hold on to this one, too. It's just cool to have it, and might be bargaining power for something I really want from a friend. All right, so we're talking about stuff I scored, um, but I had actually did have a list of things that I really wanted or needed for projects, but unfortunately I didn't really buy much, if anything, that I needed. This is the only thing, and actually it's probably one of the biggest things on my list. So I went to California hoping to buy a uh, cool old Magneto for the free tea, and I really wanted a Waco uh, or I'm sorry, a Barker X-Drive that uses two four-cylinder Waco mags on it. They look really kick-ass. If you haven't seen one before, there was two different styles. One uh, allows you to use stock water pumps. One is completely horizontal with the mags, and you cannot use stock water pumps. Uh, they are old racing mags. They're super cool, and um, I've really wanted that X-Drive one because they look just so ridiculous, and they're awesome. And uh, of course, they're rare as hell. Uh, I couldn't find one, but I stumbled on Saturday real early in the morning. Saturday is the um, first official day of the swap meet. I stumbled on this. This is a Putin. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but that's how I pronounce it. Putin um, angle drive for an early three bolt cover. So if you guys aren't into flatheads, there's or don't know a lot about them. Uh, the earlier engines, I think it's too 
41 was the last year I believe had the three bolt cover on it for the timing cover and uh, then 42 on had a two bolt cover and then of course the 8BA style uh, 49 to 53 they had like what I call like a small block style more modern uh, distributor on so this is for the three bolt style so it's a, an early um, early one it uses a has an eight cylinder cap on it's got a big Wyco mag on it but it's got the original uh, that's the it's a Model X but it's got where the heck is it right here we'll get a close-up it's got the old um, Putin tag on it which is really cool from San Diego so this is an old you know race car piece could have been out of I believe the guy had a midget for sale next to it and uh, he said that this came with this old historic midget race car so um, I am gonna take this to a guy locally that redoes old mags and get him to set this up so we can run it on the free tee. This is gonna be freaking awesome. So not only is it gonna be good performance wise, but it looks crazy. It has this really cool adapter piece in it. Everything is there. It's got the little button in the back to go right onto the cam. And uh, it's pretty much other than going through the actual mag, it's pretty good shape. So uh, I was really psyched to find this. Uh, he had this for, I think it was, I think I paid 700 bucks for this. I think these things are uh, worth, especially with a little fixing up to get the mag going, they're actually worth considerably more. I would value it probably in the 12 to $1,500 range uh, if it was, uh, you know, if it checks out all good and ready to run. But either way, I'm gonna put it on a car. Uh, I'm happy to have it, it was a lot of money, but it's something pretty rare and I've never seen one. And some of the guys in this area that have really rare parts collections, they had never had one either. So I felt like I scored pretty big because I impressed some of those guys that have way crazier collections than I do. All right, so last thing out of the expensive aluminum pile, well, not so expensive. So when I was walking to the guy that had all the free stuff, um, I bought those 40 pedals from him and as I was walking back, I saw these. I think they were, they were either free or he had a dollar a piece on them and I bought them. So what they are is they're flathead offset generator brackets, but the interesting thing is they're cast and they've never been machined. They're not drilled, they're not machined on the back side like they should be, um, and they're not tapped there where they would normally go to stud, but uh, they were brand new as cast but never used. So I grabbed them just because they were, I think they were free, but or a dollar, I can't remember. He might have given them to me, but either way, I got two of these. I don't need them. You know what that means, guys. I'm giving both of these away to you guys. So if you comment down below in this video, let me know what your favorite uh, part that you saw in the video was, and that you're interested in one of these uh, offset generator brackets, I'm gonna ship it to you for free. So uh, just something I like to do in these videos to give away stuff. Uh, and give back is give you guys some goodies. So first two people that comment that want these, you have to tell me what your favorite thing that we bought at the swap meet was, and that you want one of these generator brackets. And if you comment those two things, first two people will get these and we'll ship them out for free to you guys. So this, I uh, scored this kind of middle of the day Saturday. Uh, this guy had two or three of these that were all beat up. This was probably, to be honest, the nicest one. Uh, so it is a 38. Um, Ford pickup grill. Not sure if it's big truck or pickup uh, as far as these pieces go, but uh, I think I paid 80 or 100 bucks for it. And, for, and even though it's beat up for you guys that aren't don't don't follow all this stuff, it might seem expensive, but these things are going for incredible money for really mint ones. So even ones like this that are a little beat up. For 100 bucks, I figured I couldn't beat it. Uh, I'm gonna probably hang it on the wall for now and either sell it or trade it off to a friend that needs one. I usually just throw these grills on the wall and uh, hang on to them until I either get bored of them or somebody needs one and I put it up for sale and, and pass it on to somebody else. But this grill is very fixable. Uh, it has some bent up trim on it, but you can uh, take this all apart and definitely fix that. Uh, or run it on something that's kind of like a patina truck uh, or if you're building a hot rod, take it all apart. You can cut it up, do whatever. It's cheap enough. It's not nice enough that you're going to piss off any of the purists. But uh, it was definitely, I thought, a good deal. So I grabbed it, threw it on the pallet, and uh, here it is. If you guys have watched the video on uh, us on the trip, you saw we stopped at Home Depot and there was a guy cutting the, uh, the Luan or really cheap thin plywood for us. And 
this little guy here, not little, was why. I don't know if I'm gonna have to take this pallet. There we go. So, we put this on the bottom of the pallet. I scored this. Uh, so Friday during the Turlock swap meet, everybody lines up and uh, you can kind of run around and maybe buy a little bit of stuff as the, you can see poking out of people's trucks. Um, but then everybody goes into the swap meet and if you have a vendor pass, you can get in. Uh, Larry was nice enough to uh, let us tag along with one of his vendor passes and uh, you can get in and everybody sets up on Friday. Really great day to buy if you have the extra day to burn. Obviously we were out there for vacation so it was no big deal. And we ran around and we bought some good stuff uh, on Friday, including that fixed in air cleaner, the wind intake, and maybe some other odds and ends. But this was probably my favorite thing I found. It was like halfway through the day when everybody was kind of setting up and getting stuff out on the ground. I walked up on a guy that just took this out of the truck. Oh, wait. Wait, I forgot about it. Mike's Ham's uh, rug, bath rug we call it, that we guilted him into buying. This is like a handmade piece, but I told him he had to have it, and I'm sure his wife's not too happy, but you know what? It's really cool, and I thought he needed to have it. So we, Jason and I guilted him into buying this. It was so cheap. I think he paid like 30 bucks or something for it, or 20 bucks, so pretty funny. <laughs> It's awesome, we got a great photo, we'll drop in right here of him standing there holding it. Going like that, probably because he's scared of what his wife's gonna do when he gets home and she sees he has uh, this stupid little <laughs> bathroom. Anyways, back to cool All right. This bad boy. And it's rough, but it's killer. Old, abused, but awesome. So it's an old Ford Fordson sales and service uh, tr car, truck, tractor, porcelain dealer sign. It's like uh, 60 inches long, and I think it was like 27 or 28 inches tall. Um, pretty beat up, it looks like it was bent and it was sitting somewhere pretty rough. The guy I got it from had just pulled it out of the truck and I think he said it came from Washington State or Oregon. I forget now, but he, I think it was Washington State he got it from, um, and he had this for sale. I think I ended up paying like 400 bucks for it, which again, for you guys that aren't into this stuff or don't follow the prices of this stuff, that might sound like a lot of money for a kind of rusty sign that was probably bent at one time, but uh, these signs in a little better condition, maybe without the rust in the center, are like three, $4,000 signs. So you know what? I'm happy to pay $400 for a sign that is basically just as cool. I'm gonna hang it up in the shop. It'll match kind of the decor of my shop. And I don't have any Ford dealer signs, porcelain dealer signs. So this is my first one, really psyched. Uh, whenever I see them, they get snatched up. If this was in our part of the world at a swap meet, this probably would have been a lot more money and still would have sold for uh, really, really quickly. So I can't wait to hang this. So I'm gonna hang this right above some of my grills on the back wall. And uh, you know what? It's a great, great memory. Every piece, I tell you guys that when we do these videos, every piece that's hanging on the wall or that we put on a car, we have a story and a memory from. And uh, this guy right here, I have a really great story. It was really awesome buying this. There was guys in line waiting to buy it as I was negotiating with the guy. And as soon as they saw I, I handed him money, they all just walked away shaking their heads because they were mad they couldn't grab it. So really uh, glad, glad to have it. And that's the last thing on the pallet. All right, so that was everything from our Turlock Swap Meet slash Grand National Roadster Show road trip adventure that we had the end of January. Everything arrived, looks okay. Don't think I'm missing anything, I hope. Uh, and uh, you know, I have a few things that I could sell. Sold one thing already that paid for a lot of, uh, a lot of our expenses. And uh, overall, we had a crap ton of fun and I'm really happy. So uh, to recap, any of you guys that are watching the video, if you'd like one of these, uh, flathead offset generator brackets that are undrilled and tapped. Drop a comment down below. First person to comment with your favorite thing that we got at the swap meet. 
and uh, that you want one of these brackets, uh, we will ship them out to you for free. So definitely do that. As always, we try and give you guys something free when we go on these adventures because we think it's a fun way to uh, kind of bring you guys along and experience what we are seeing. Uh, so that's all I have for this one. I appreciate you guys following along as always. We do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. We kind of drop in videos. Who knows what we're filming anymore on each of those days, but we're having fun. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.